Give him stand as you are able. Welcome to worship on this Reformation Sunday. A special welcome to those celebrating confirmation with us this morning and those worshiping with us online. I am Pastor Cheryl, honored to serve at Lindale Lutheran, and as always, so very glad to be here. So very glad that each of you are here. A couple of announcements. Order your poinsettias today, or at the very latest, call in that order by Wednesday morning. Uh, the youth are selling winter porch pots as a fundraiser this year, so you could also order one of those by Wednesday for yourself, for the church, as a gift to a friend. Next Sunday, November 7th, is All Saints Sunday. We remember and honor those who have gone before us. There will be an opportunity to light a candle in memory of your loved ones and to speak their name aloud. We're working on care packages for our college students. If you have an address or a name of a college student that you would like us to remember, call the church office or see Debbie Selly. Looking ahead, November 21st, Thanksgiving Basket Sunday. Details are coming in the lantern. That will also be Bible Sunday for our three-year-olds and our fourth graders. Again, you'll see details in the lantern that will be coming out soon. And looking even a little further ahead, the annual Christmas pageant, Sunday School Christmas pageant, will be Sunday, December 12th, 
right here at 1030. Rehearsal on Saturday morning the day before. It'll be really important for kiddos to try and be in Sunday school in the coming weeks as we'll be working hard preparing to lead worship that Sunday. Does anyone else have any announcements they would like to make? Okay. Uh, worship at, at home. If you want to help us with the Thanksgiving ministry, 30 years plus strong, please give me a call. Three ways you can help. Sponsor a family start to finish. You can help deliver. And you can always donate cash. Now we are working with Margaret Lacey in Watertown. But you can shop where you want. Please give me a call if you have any questions. Thank you so much, Steve. Other announcements? Worship continues with confession and absolution as printed on page one in our bulletins. Please stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord.
church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel. And bestow on your church your saving grace. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Gospel Acclamation is found on page 151 in the front of our red hymnals. That's not it. Let's not do that one then. You know, whatever gospel acclamation our amazing music leaders give us, that's what we're going to sing. Or not. Let's go with this. The gospel according to John, the eighth chapter, beginning with the 31st verse. I am grateful that we are here and loved and have God's grace, regardless of how well we think we're prepared to worship and find out we are not. The Gospel according to John. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated and I invite children to come up for children's time. Know that we are being recorded, and should you choose to have your children come forward, you are giving permission for their images and their voices to appear online. Come on up. Come on up, Cormac and Marlon and Mero and Sadie and Grace. All kinds of kids here today. I'm so glad to see all of you. Is that Blake, your cousin? Brayden. That's Blake, that's Brayden. But they're both your cousins, right? Yeah, so that works. Garrett's still coming, okay. Hi, Garrett. Thanks for coming up today. Today is Confirmation Sunday at Lindale. You might see Lauren and Maria are dressed in special clothes and they have been studying and learning and getting ready to say yes to the promises that their parents and godparents, sponsors made for them when they were baptized. Today is also something else. What else are we celebrating today? What day is it? Yes, Halloween, you're right. What happens on Halloween? Candy. Candy, what else? <laughs> Trick or treating. So you dress up in something, right? A special costume. Nice. It. Lauren and Maria are dressed up today too. And then what happens? You get up dressed up in a costume and then what happens? Nice. You go trick-or-treating and how do you go trick-or-treating? You walk to different people's houses and then you get candy. So do you have to pay for your candy? Do you have to earn your candy? How? What do you have to do? You just get to have candy. And you know what? That's why Halloween and trick-or-treating remind me of God's grace, God's love and forgiveness. You don't have to pay those people to give you candy. You don't have to get everything right in order to get candy, no matter what. They just give it to you because they want to be kind, because they care about you, because they want to show love. And that's exactly what God does for us every single day. We don't have to earn God's favor. That means we're already God's favorite, every one of us. Just like we don't have to earn those treats, we don't have to earn God's grace. Let's pray about that. Dear God, 
Thank you for fun days like Halloween. And thank you for special treats like candy. But most of all, thank you for grace, for naming us in baptism and for giving us again and again. And thanks for doing it all for free, doing it because you love us. In Jesus' name we always pray, and all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Very nice. And I do have a treat. That's for you. And when you get your treat, you may go back and sit down. You are welcome. It is because we were celebrating Halloween yesterday at the trunk or treat, weren't we? I like the way you are all waiting so patiently. That is fabulous. Come on over, ladies. You're never too old for God's grace, and you're never too old to get a treat. You're welcome. You want to take two? Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today is Reformation Sunday. From the Worship Planning Guide Sundays and Seasons, we read, Rooted in the past and growing into the future, the church must always be reformed and be reforming in order to live out the love of Christ in an ever-changing world. We celebrate the good news of God's grace that Jesus Christ sets us free every day to do this life-transforming work. And we heard in the Gospel of John this morning, if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. We are made free, not by our own efforts or doing, and we are not made free so that we can live out our own personal choices and always put those choices first. We are made free for service to all people. We are made free to love our neighbor. Today is a day for celebrating and remembering, for being family, for being church family, the kind of family who sees faith and freedom as a celebration, as a gift, not of our own doing. We are reminded of those words from Romans and Ephesians that Martin Luther read with new eyes and heard with new words, words that, new ears, words that give us hope and joy. For you have been saved by grace. This is not your own doing. This is all God's doing. We are loved and we are forgiven and not because of anything we do or don't do. This year's theme at Lindale is all things made new. Today I think of the verse from Romans, one of the verses Shonda used to create our fellowship table decor for the year. Walk in newness of life. The first part of that verse says, therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. Today, in just a very few minutes, two of our young people will affirm their baptisms. They will say yes to newness of life. Stop now and for just a minute, consider the gift of your own baptism or perhaps the gift you have yet to receive of baptism. In baptism, we are literally joined to Christ, joined to grace itself, buried and raised, raised to walk in newness of life. In baptism, we are chosen each of us, when we say, I am baptized, we are saying, we are naming and claiming that right now, Christ is alive in me, in you. Christ chose to live in me and in you, and Christ choosing us, the reality of the closeness of God's love is new every moment, all things made new. Today, both Lauren and Maria have chosen new ways to share their faith with us, new ways to affirm their faith, and to continue in the word. As John writes, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples. Our two confirmands 
Lauren and Maria, are today declaring their desire to be disciples, their desire to continue in God's word. That's what offers me the grace and the peace that I declared to each of you at the beginning of this message. Let's hear now their messages, their faith statements, as together we continue in the word, trusting God to make all things new. I call first on Lauren. to sing at church. Without her nudging me, I would not be doing this for my project today. My mom has played piano for me since I was five. She has never stopped playing for me for 10 years, and I think that's amazing. I have sang countless times here at Lindale. Every time, it's been with her playing for me. My mom is the person who has taken me to Sunday school, church, confirmation, and all other church events. She helped me when I would have questions and doubts. She even helped me with my faith project. So here's my faith journey for music. video is probably my first memory of singing. I was five, and I already was singing my faith. We sang Jesus Loves Me almost every night before bed. I don't remember when I didn't believe in God and know that Jesus loves me. Son. 
song is from The Sound of Music. My piano recital was here at Lindale. I wanted to include this clip because it reminds me that church is a part of all of my life, and it should be. Maybe that's what we mean when we say in the Apostles' Creed that we believe in the whole Catholic Church. The title of the song is also the name of my friend and neighbor, Maria, who is being confirmed with me today. I've known her literally my whole life, and it made church even better when she and her family decided to come to Lindale, where I've always gone to church. And if you knew Maria like I do, you know that the title of the song, How Do You Solve a Problem Like Maria, is a perfect fit. from the Christmas program when I was in fifth grade. I was learning and growing, but sometimes I did feel like what this song says. What's the point? Why do we do everything that we do at church? and wonderings, sometimes I, under, sometimes I understand better why we are here. It isn't just about ourselves. It's about sharing our gifts and our faith with other people. talks to me about prayer and how God answers prayers and blesses us in lots of different ways and not always the way we want. I think the line, what if your blessings come through raindrops, is a part of why I love the rain. God is close to me. songs I learned as a member of the Lindell Choir. This clip was from a Family Good Friday service. You can hear noise and babies in the background. That happens a lot when I sing, especially at church. You have to block out the sound and focus on the lyrics. Just like sometimes if you can't find God, you have to block other stuff out and just listen.
sang before the pandemic changed everything. That was the last time I was standing up singing a solo and looking out and seeing all our congregation and how much love there was in my church family. It hasn't been easy to have half of my confirmation time happen during the pandemic, but with Jennifer, Pastor Cheryl, and the older kids who were confirmed last fall, Maria, and now Alyssa, we still kept learning and growing and having fun. God is with us, even in pandemics, and our church has stayed together. I hope I can sing this on Christmas Eve this year. is important because it is why we are here. Because Jesus died and rose, we are loved and forgiven. song I recorded during the pandemic. It was used online. It kind of talks about Jesus calling us and will we answer and follow him. That is what I'm saying yes to by getting confirmed today. has broken many times since I first learned it. Sanctuary was the first solo I sang in church when I was five, and I sang it again just this past year. It was recorded for a service during the pandemic. So I begin and end this project with the same songs. Singing at age five in church just for fun is the way my faith journey through music started. And I found out this was a way I could give back to my church family. I've changed a lot since I first sang these songs. And I'm sure I will continue to grow and change in lots of ways. What doesn't change is God, and me knowing God is with me. To finish my faith project, I'd like to sing a song I learned recently that talks about the body of Christ and how beautiful it is.
I was recently invited to a wedding and I was asked to sing How Beautiful. I wasn't sure at first as I had never sung at a wedding before. I've sung at funerals, baptisms, and almost anything you can think of, but I had never sung at a wedding. I learned the song and it sounded good and wondered if I should add it to my confirmation project. By the time the wedding day came, I still wasn't sure if I would be singing it for you all today. Remember when I talked earlier about how I realized my voice can bring comfort and joy to people? When I saw the joy that was in the bride's eyes and in her family's eyes, I knew I had to sing it today too. I hope this song makes you as happy as it makes me.
and how beautiful your faith project was, Lauren. And we continue in the words as we prepare for Maria's faith project. The confirmation show was pre recorded before a live studio audience and is not Lauren Black's confirmation project. questions about your faith. Okay, I'm excited to get started. Okay, the first question is, what would you say that you believe? Um, I would say I believe in grace, God the Creator, God and God the Son the most. I think that grace is really important. I mean, just knowing you get free, unearned, undeserved love and forgiveness from God is really reassuring. I definitely also believe in God the Holy Spirit, the church, and forgiveness. Changing to Linda Lutheran has helped my faith grow in all these areas. God the Holy Spirit is harder to understand. I think that's the part of God we can sometimes feel. I think God the Creator is our Lord. We would not even be here without God. I also believe that God the Son is Jesus, and without Him our sins would not be forgiven. He is our Savior. Oh, wow. Thanks for sharing. No problem. What's your next question? Oh, right. My next question for you is, what do you ever wonder about your faith? I'm not going to lie. I question my faith like everyone else does from time to time. Other than an occasional what do I believe feeling, I also wonder why. Why did we get so lucky to have God forgive our sins and give up his only son? Why did God still love everyone even though they didn't believe Jesus? Pastor Cheryl says it's good to wonder. I mean, I could go on and on, but the biggest thing is, why? Okay, I think I get where you're coming from. Why do you want to get confirmed today? You see what I did there? <laughs> ha ha, Lauren. I guess I probably want to be confirmed. Because maybe, just maybe, it means we won't become church hoppers again. <laughs> but for real, it is a big step getting confirmed, and I'm just ready. You know that feeling like I can take on anything in the world? I mean, I guess. That is ex exactly how I feel, except not the world. I'm ready to take on the rest of my faith journey. I guess that makes sense. Going back to what you said about questioning 
what you believe, what were some experience, experiences you would say caused you to question your faith? The biggest time I ever questioned my faith was only a few years ago. I hadn't started confirmation yet, so I was going to my friend's church on, for Wednesday get-togethers. It was a youth group for young kids where they would play games, then split up into small groups to talk about God and the Bible. At the start, though, they would have one big lesson on the Bible or prayer. One of the leaders said, to go to heaven, you needed to be told this special prayer. I did not know that prayer. I went home that night wondering if I was going to heaven. Now that I look back, it was silly of me to think that. I probably misunderstood her or something. There, there were a, probably a good few days where I questioned my faith a lot. But I also was in like fourth grade or something, so I forgot within a week. But I also understand now that some of our Christian siblings believe that you do need to be, become a believer and ask God to save you. I think we received that gift at our baptism through the Holy Spirit. But we do have to claim it and live it. Kind of what we're doing today by getting confirmed. Yikes, that's a lot. But let's be honest. At the time, you probably forgot within a week because you got your tail feathers all ruffled up about something else. You do tend to do that a lot. I did not, and I do not. Okay, yeah. <coughs> okay, if you say so. I have one more question for you. Okay. But then I have a fun idea to wrap up this show. Should I be scared? Maybe. Oh, okay. Anyway, last question. Who has been important to your, in your faith journey? My mom. She's always the one who made me stand up during church for songs and prayers, even when I was playing. She was the one who brought me to Sunday school. She helped me grow my faith. When I didn't know what question to ask during confirmation, she helped me come up with something. When I forgot the blanket I made at home, she brought it to confirmation when she picked me up. Also, let's not forget, she drove me and you to confirmation or back every Wednesday she could. My mom has helped me grow my faith so much, even if she didn't realize it. Nice. Also, thanks for driving us, Mary. You too, Nessa, Tom, and Dad. Now... How about we play a round of the bell game to wrap up the show? Yes. Pastor Joe and Jennifer, could you guys ask us two more questions to wrap up the show? Absolutely. I mean, I need to win at least one more time. No, 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 no. that's not how that's going. I think it is. Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. This was one of their favorite confirmation activities. We used it as a review, and we would ask questions, and whoever rang the bell first got to give the answer. And as you can tell, these two were not at all competitive. It was all just for fun, always. Are you ready? What does the word gospel mean? Good news. Good Say news. it again. Good news. Okay. Question number two. What is grace? Free, unearned, undeserved love and forgiveness from God. Absolutely, and I think that, like it or not, we will end in a tie. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Thank you for another new way, Maria, for us to grow in the word and to share God's Thank faith. Thank you, Pastor, Pastor Cheryl, Cheryl and Jennifer. Thanks, ladies. You can leave it, ladies. I kind of like this new way that we're celebrating confirmation with all kinds of <coughs> hallelujah launchers and note cards. And 
what more do I need to say? You have heard faith shared, faith confirmed in new ways, all things new, and clearly we are blessed to continue in God's word with Maria and Lauren as they continue in their faith journey. What a perfect picture of exactly how beautiful the body of Christ is. Call on Ryan Rosenau as president of the congregation. I present uh, these students who desire to make public affirmation of their baptism, Lauren Elizabeth Black and Maria Catherine Lee. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these young people whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them with gifts of your spirit, and nourished them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. I invite the congregation to stand as you are able. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of the world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. Do you believe in God the Father? Amen. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son? God the Holy Spirit. is not always my strong suit. Welcome everyone, family and friends. I'm Jennifer Halverson and my title might be confirmation mentor, but what I am is grateful. Along with Pastor Cheryl, I've been blessed to walk with Lauren and Maria during the past two years studying the Bible in 50 words. 50 words, it sounds so simple. But if the Bible was anything but simple, or people around the world wouldn't still be studying and 
learning and wondering all these many years. In preparation for today, the pyramids were changed from green to red in celebration of Reformation Sunday and Confirmation. I was overwhelmed reflecting on the incredible acts of love and faith that led to the simple change of altar cloths. Generation after generation telling the story in words and song and art, like our stained glass windows. Youth such as Lauren and Maria taking the time to listen, learn, and ask questions. I'm grateful for the dedication of parents and other adults making sure there was space and time for confirmation in spite of the many pulls in today's busy schedules. I'm grateful that Lauren and Maria would say yes to confirmation despite their busy school and sports schedules. I'm grateful for Pastor Cheryl's leadership and for this congregation, which walks with Maria and Lauren on their faith journey. Today is not graduation, but a step. An important step, to be sure, but a step in a lifelong relationship with our Lord and Savior. And I'm grateful to have been witness to this part of the journey. Lord and Maria, thank you. Thank you, Jennifer, for your faithful leadership. I invite Lauren and Maria to please approach the altar and kneel. You have made published profession of your faith do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ in word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? If so, answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support these young people and pray for them in their life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. I invite uh, family and baptismal sponsors, anyone who would like to come forward uh, for the uh, Do you want me to go first? Okay. It's always good they can tell me what to do. I invite uh, the family of Maria Lee to please come forward as you choose and as you are able, parents, grandparents, sponsors, anyone is welcome to come forward. Be careful of our hallelujah ribbon there on the floor. Come close, lay your hands on Maria or hold hands with another person. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. O God in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Maria the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence forever both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Family may be seated. I invite family and sponsors, God, grandparents, godparents to come forward for Lauren Black. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth. Cleanse us from sin and raise us to eternal life. O God, in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Lauren the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, 
the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Family and friends may be seated. Let us rejoice with these newly confirmed young women. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Please stand and face your congregation, parents, sponsors, members, and friends of Lindale Lutheran Church. <laughs> I present to you our newest members of this congregation, Lauren Black and Maria Lee. Let's, let's follow the tradition that we have had in baptism, singing Jesus Loves Me as they walk around the congregation. They were once carried through the congregation as we sang that song. They have now affirmed the promises their parents and sponsors made in baptism. smiling behind those masks, ladies, because you should have been. Set free from sin and death and nourished by the word of truth, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. We pray for all who long for a word of truth and for the radical grace that flows from the cross. Inspire congregations to freely and boldly proclaim your love for all people with persistence and hope. Bless our bishops, Anne and Elizabeth. Ignite in us the working of the Holy Spirit. Lead and bless Lauren and Maria. May they walk in the faith they have affirmed this day. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for your creation, for mountains, rivers, streams, cities, homesteads, and neighborhoods. Write in our hearts a new love and care for creation. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who long for healing of mind, body, or spirit. Those who continue to suffer from COVID, those who love them, and those who care for them. And for all we name now, aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Kim, Kathy, Nancy, Lizzie. Jake and Florence, Becky and her family, David, Dick Johnson and his family as he nears the end of life. Lord, in your mercy, even in death you free us and give us a place in your house. We give thanks for our ancestors who have shown us truth and freedom, especially Martin Luther and all who work for the renewal of the church. We pray for all whose loss is recent. Steve Wyland and family upon the death of his mother. Chris Semizer and family upon the death of his stepbrother, Matt. And Carol Brown and her daughter, Jen, and family as they continue to grieve the death of Jen's husband, Eric. Lord, in your mercy. Confident that you hear us, O oh God, we boldly place, place our prayers into your hands through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Please share God's peace as you are able to safely. That looks a lot like waving and smiles behind masks these days. We worship with our offering. And since we are receiving offering as people come in or go out of our worship space, we will stand as we are able to sing the offering response. Everything is yours. 
It's on page three in our bulletins. Please stand as you are able. printed on page three in our bulletins. Most merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Great Thanksgiving is printed on page 152 in the front of our red hymn books. right, our duty, and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, and in the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Please be seated before you receive the elements and we hear the Lord's Prayer sung this morning.
people of God, you've received the elements prepackaged. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Please stand as you are able for the communion blessing. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Creator and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our sending hymn, Amazing Grace. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. There are refreshments available. There's a table outdoors. We can't yet gather in our fellowship hall.